If you're anything like me, you probably love throwing away trash. Garbage cans, dumpsters, people's shoes, cats, dogs, the British, it doesn't make a difference to me. Every time I toss a piece of trash into a bin, I feel an overwhelming sense of peace. Or at least, that's how things used to be. Unfortunately, after I saw a video about garbage trucks, also known as trash trucks, rubbish trucks, bin lorries, refuse trucks, dust carts, junk trucks, bin wagons, bin vans, and probably other silly names, I've been forced to face the harsh reality that items don't just disappear after they leave my hands. Whether it was to quell the intense guilt I felt or out of a genuine curiosity, I thought that I should educate myself, and by proxy you all, on how these smelly vehicles came to be. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, people were generally responsible for handling their own refuse, either repurposing items that could still be used or dumping them into a large pile which would be burned or buried. In larger settlements, horse-drawn wagons were used to transport waste of all varieties to dump sites outside of populated areas, serving as effectively the first version of both a garbage truck and a sewage truck. It wasn't until the 1880s that the first motorized refuse collection vehicles were invented, mostly just simple pickup trucks which were loaded with trash. In 1887, the London-based Thornycroft Steam Wagon and Carriage company were the first to add a tipping bed design, which allowed for easier offloading of garbage. Around this time, a large proportion of people's trash was ash from already burned refuse, something that was hard to keep contained within the bed of a moving truck. At this point in history, being a garbage man was one of the worst jobs you could have, especially in large cities. Outside of the terrible smell, workers were tasked with moving heavy loads of garbage into the rear of the truck, often having to hoist it above their heads in order to do so. Among other things, this led to garbage collectors being exposed to dangerous materials and human waste, both of which came with extreme health hazards. The recent advent of the sewer system in some areas of the world helped to ease this suffering, but many places still use garbage trucks for human waste transport for decades following. A main priority for manufacturers eyeing up opportunities in the refuse collection industry was eliminating both the strain and the exposure that garbage collectors would have to endure in their line of work. Over the course of the next few decades, garbage trucks saw minimal change outside of their engines and cabs, which generally progressed with truck trends at the time. The first US truck invented entirely for garbage collection was produced by the company Mac in 1908, which is notable as it featured fold-down bed walls for ease of access. The most widespread garbage truck advancement prior to the 1920s was the addition of covered and sealed beds, which helped to eliminate odor and waste falling off the back, especially the ash I mentioned earlier. In the late 20s, a system was invented in which a garbage collector would place refuse into a bin that was then hoisted via a corkscrew mechanism into the bed. Later in 1929, this design was reinvented with a cable mechanism instead of a corkscrew, which is only slightly more reliable, but the vast majority of garbage trucks were still loaded entirely by hand. It took another eight years from this point for there to be another notable advancement in the world of garbage trucks, mostly because people were busy being poor. In 1937, a man from Knoxville, Tennessee named George Dempster invented what I personally believe is the most ingeniously named product of the 20th century, the Dempster Dumpster. The Dempster Dumpster system utilized large metallic refuse boxes instead of the traditional garbage cans, mechanically lifting them from a winch mechanism mounted on the rear of a truck. Outside of revolutionizing the landscape of garbage trucks, the Dempster Dumpster design also popularized these large metal containers, which we lovingly refer to as dumpsters to this day. A year later, in 1938, the Garwood Load Packer was invented, a hydraulic garbage compactor built into the truck's refuse container, which doubled the capacity of the average garbage truck. Over the next few decades, various types of garbage loaders would be invented and used across the United States. The 1950s saw the invention of the front loader design, a more efficient version of the Dempster Dumpster, though it didn't come into popular use until the 70s. The 60s brought the automated side loader, a design which made use of small curbside trash cans and allowed the driver to remain in the vehicle while garbage was being collected, cutting overall load time down to 30 seconds. It's hard to say much about the progression of garbage trucks throughout the latter half of the 20th century, and that's for a few reasons. The first of which is that these trucks aren't all that complicated, and designs which became popular in the 60s and 70s have remained useful and efficient even today. The second reason is that there are just so many garbage trucks around the world, most of which look and operate fairly similarly. It would be impossible to cover the progression of every individual municipality. As someone who's not an expert in the field of garbage trucks, I apologize for any information that's missing here. I know there's probably quite a bit, but feel free to fill in the gaps in the comments. So, generally speaking, what do garbage trucks look like today? Well, garbage trucks are broken down into six different categories based on how the refuse is collected and what kind of refuse it is. Front loaders, as I mentioned before, are specialized for emptying dumpsters and as such cater more so to commercial and industrial businesses. They are equipped with a twin forked appendage on the front, which is manually aligned via a joystick with grooves on the dumpster, locking it in place. From here, the arm raises and turns the dumpster up upside down, much in the way that you'd shoot a basketball with your back turned to the hoop. Side loaders come in a few varieties having to do with their level of automation. As trucks which generally cater to residential areas, these are specialized for small garbage cans. Manual side loader trucks require people to
able to physically put the trash into the refuse compartment, harkening back to the original garbage trucks from before. These trucks are usually lowered to the ground with a short hopper for inserting the trash. There are also automated side loaders, which use an extendable arm to grab trash cans and, in a motion very similar to the front loader, turn the cans upside down to empty them. Semi-automated side loaders are almost identical to automated side loaders, except that the trash cans must be physically placed into the arm, with the driver having to leave the cabin to do so. There are also combinations of manual and automated side loaders which allow for both depending on the situation. Rear loaders are great for dense urban areas due to their multi-use design. In cities like New York, you might see garbage men hanging on to the rear of these trucks, throwing trash in by hand. These can accommodate a wide variety of trash types due to the size and easy access of the rear opening. Pneumatic collectors are pretty rare to see, and that's because they rely on the existence of an automated vacuum collection system. Without getting into too many details, an automated vacuum collection system is a series of pneumatic tubes which collect a community's trash in one location. Pneumatic collectors use a long tube which interlocks with one of these garbage collection points, and using vacuums sucks all the trash into its refuse container. Grapple trucks are essentially dump trucks which are installed with a large articulated arm that acts like a crane, usually with a clamshell bucket on the end. These are used for large items of trash that cannot fit in regular garbage trucks such as furniture, large appliances, trees, or anything else considered oversized. The final type of garbage truck is known as a roll-off, which is generally used for bulk waste. Roll-offs use specialized containers which interlock with the truck bed and literally roll on and off the truck via a combination of wheels and cables. These exist somewhere in between a dump truck and a garbage truck, but considering that they're used mostly for construction and demolition waste, I think they count. A similar thing can be said about grapple trucks. One final thing to note is that most garbage trucks are installed with some kind of hydraulic garbage compactor, the most modern iterations of which are able to be run while the truck is in motion. Depending on the load style, these compactors work in different ways, pushing old trash away from wherever new trash is being inserted. The next time you throw something into a trash can, be it a piece of plastic or a series of wild animals all biting and scratching you, I'd encourage you to thank the people who have to deal with your stinky bags of trash. Thanks for watching. Sorry this video smelled so bad, I've called YouTube repeatedly and they've told me there's nothing they can do about it. If you're interested in Discord, we've got one of those which I'll link below. I promise you it smells much worse than this channel. But yeah, that's all I got for today. Thanks again and goodbye.